The Lexus Spindle Grill has turned 10 years old. Hate it or love it, the Spindle Grill has been the major talking point at the Lexus water cooler. Haters will call it the Predator Mall or the Darth Vader mug, and many refuse to buy a Lexus until the design changes. Admirers and acceptors of the grill don't say much and deal with a controversial design because of the quality product that lies underneath. Today, we'll stroll down memory lane with the Lexus Spindle Grill, touch upon the history, discuss the best and worst Spindle Grills ever, and predict where Lexus is headed as they evolve the contentious Spindle Grill. Lexus's 11-year reign as the best-selling luxury brand in the United States lasted from 2000 to 2011. And in 2011 came the tsunami, which disrupted auto production in Japan, making the 2020 COVID shutdowns look like a joke. Also in 2011, Lexus introduced the Spindle Grill with the LFGH concept that later made its way in the 2013 Lexus GS redesign. Lexus never reclaimed the sales crown in the USA since the introduction of the Spindle Grill. So why did Lexus risk so much with the controversial design that has seemingly tarnished their success? Lexus in the late 2000s was criticized by being stodgy, boring, lackluster. So Lexus wanted an edge to their brand in order to change the public's perception and attract new and younger customers. This meant putting their game-winning conservative formula on the line. Customers want stronger character a stronger expression of the premium brand, says Yohiruta, global design chief for Toyota Motor Corp's Lexus division. This is a very, very important turning point, he said, and a turning point it surely was for the brand. Head of Lexus in 2011, Kiyotake Ise said, you should be able to identify a car as a Lexus immediately. Instant visual recognition, for example, is the reason behind our spindle grill. It may look aggressive at first glance, that's intentional but it also always conveys its boldness with sophistication and elegance. And quote, Lexus began marketing the spindle grill on the redesigned Lexus GS in 2012. One ad campaign employed Sport Illustrated swimsuit model Tori Praver. Lexus designed a racing video game mobile app where you could drive the GS around her body. In those promos, they claimed there's no going back. But clearly, Lexus has backtracked on this. The original article is still up, but Lexus has taken down all the media regarding the Tori 500 video game app. The other promo for the Spindle Grill took a page out of Jurassic Park during the Super Bowl in 2012 with the 2013 GS, claiming change cannot be contained. They also said this is just the beginning, alluding to the foreign coming Spindle Grill models hidden behind the garage doors behind the GS. Just the beginning it was, as here we are in 2022, battle hardened as we've endured a decade with the Predator and the Vader. And I could go on and on with their product placements in movies and shows from the Black Panther to Men in Black to Valerian to the Eternals to Moonfall to Bel Air to the new Father and the Bride movie. But let's not get trapped in the webs of the spindle grill. We need to look for the light at the end of the tunnel. And the spindle grill is finally morphing into something truly beautiful with the spindle body as the brand transforms into a fully electric marquee by 2030. But before we see where Lexus is going with their upcoming designs, let's take a look at the worst spindle grill and best spindle grill designs of the past decade. Starting with the CT. The CT came out in around 2011 and it was an awesome looking little hatchback for the brand. And it's, I think it's just now being discontinued in Japan. So it's lasted a long time. It got cut here in 20, uh, 2017. So this vehicle debuted with the spindle grill. Not bad, not bad at all. It looked a little bit like the 2013 GS up front, which is a pretty good looking vehicle. But what happened when they refreshed it is the spindle grill went full on predator here. This is the most aggressive Predator spindle grill that we've seen in the Lexus lineup. And it went from looking pretty decent, in my opinion, to looking very controversial. I mean, that's full on Predator right there in every single model. Now, after 2017 and other parts of the world, it got an additional refresh. Still looks pretty aggressive. I wouldn't say it looks much better, but I guess it looks more updated. The next model, the Lexus ES. So what we're looking at here is like a 2015 model year ES. And it did have some spindle grill. You can see that. But it, I like how it was broken up with this front portion here where you could put, you know, the, the license plate on. And here's another look of that ES. It didn't look terrible. Then in the 2016 refresh, 
they went full on predator grill again and it made the vehicle look worse in my opinion from this to that what do you guys think one of the worst spindle grill designs of all time in my opinion going to the second generation gx came out like what 2009 2010 and we're still on this same generation mind you over like 10 thir 12 13 years something like that so this is when the lexus gs gx came out the second gen looked pretty decent pretty basic up front uh you can definitely tell it's more of like a rounded 2010s design we get into the 2014 refresh and this is one of my least favorite spindle grills right here. You have the overlapping portion uh, on the bottom with the portion on the top. And then you have two different patterns here. It just looks awful in my opinion. There it is again. Yuck. In 2020, they, they refreshed the grill. And I think it looks better. Does it look great? No. And I think this version still looks better uh, when it first came out. So here we have, this is what we have with the current GX and the new headlights help out a lot. The true new triple beams, the daytime running lights are really sharp on the new GX, but yes, yeah, still not a good spindle grill. I had to bring up the LM. The Lexus LM is a minivan based off the Toyota Alphard for select markets, mainly China, maybe Singapore, Southeast Asia. It's ultra luxury. You can almost see parts of the spindle grill into this design on the side of the vehicle, the window trim. But this is probably the biggest spindle grill that Lexus ever came out with. And it's definitely going to catch your eye. And you're definitely not going to mistake it for any other vehicle. Moving to the LX, we're still in the worst spindle grill designs, mind you. Not bad. Looks a lot like that GX did when it came out. So I think this came out in 2007. And then they gave it more spindle grill. So here it is when it came out. They gave it a refresh. It doesn't look terrible, in my opinion. And then what happened in 2016 is they went full on Vader grill here and it's not terrible. In my opinion, I don't think the LX 570 2016 to 2021 looked that bad, even though it is a lot of grill not sold on the new LX 600 grill. This thing is polarizing. I wouldn't say it's, it's very Darth Vader or predator like, but this is a spindle grill design that I can't necessarily get on board with. It looks better in the dark. It's like telling a, a girl that she's prettier in the dark, in the shadows. That's what's going on with the LX600 here. Luckily, you can get an appearance package with the badass 18-inch wheels, fat tires, and you can get it, get it blacked out. I think this looks better. And then we also have the F-Sport model, which looks a little bit better as well. But that's a lot of glossy black right there. So... LX 600, you made the, the list of the worst spindle grill designs, and you've carried that tradition onto the newest generation of vehicles. I think we're, I think we're getting close to the end for the worst spindle grill designs. There's just so many bad ones that this list just keeps going on. The NX, when it came out, is a cool looking vehicle in most parts of the world. In America, we they had to shorten the bumper to make it uh, a light a light truck or something like that for uh, emission standards, cafe ratings, whatever. So they, they changed the front bumper in the United States and it turned it into this pointy beak boat looking thing. And literally there's a boat in the background. How fitting. I didn't realize that. So they made the NX in America look like a boat. The only way you could get around this boat looking bumper is if, well, you lived in a different country and the bumper looked normal like this or you got the F Sport model. So the F Sport NX first generation looks so much better than this Bodhi looking thing. Then we're going to the Lexus RX. So I brought this up. This is my favorite Lexus RX design. The second generation debuted with the RX 330. Uh, then we got the third generation here and they had a little bit of a spindle grill going on uh, after the 2013, 13, 14 and 15 model year. They got a refresh. So they got new headlights and then we got Probably, it might be my least favorite spindle grill ever. The 2016 RX, and this is their best selling vehicle. And this is what really pissed off a lot of customers is this front end on that 2016 through 2019 RX. Here it is again. And it's just, man, that's, that's bad. That is bad design. It looks like the shutters on my windows behind me. They're partially closed here. They're fully open here. And this bezel on the outside is horrendous. Now, it looks slightly better in the F-Sport model. 
So I'll give it that because the, the bottom lip kind of broke up that front bumper where it didn't on the non F Sport. So the F Sport uh, with the mesh pattern uh, definitely looks better than the non F Sport model. Then in 2020, they made it look a little bit better. And a little bit goes a long ways when it looked so bad before. So they gave it this new pattern, very light, very much like the 2020 GX refresh. Uh, and they gave it some more character on the bottom as well. So they really slimmed down that bezel on the outside. Uh, they made it more soft and rounded compared to the outgoing bezel, which was very angular, very sharp and pointy. And then, yes, they just made it slightly better. Here's the F Sport model uh, with the 2020 Refresh RX. And, you know, it kind of looks a little frowny here with the rounded edges, but it doesn't look terrible in my opinion. And we'll talk about the new RX grill here shortly with the, the fifth generation RX. Hopefully you brought your snacks and drinks because we have a lot left to go over with the spindle grill. We're now going to go over the best spindle grills out there. The, the best designs since the inception of the spindle grill. So what we're looking at is a travesty, the 2016 ES refresh. And what they did with the 2019 redesign, they made a really good looking spindle grill here, in my opinion. So one of the more elegant looking ones kind of got this uh, vertical waterfall going on. I think it looks pretty good overall. What do you guys think? Do you think the, the, this generation ES deserved, um, to be on the best spindle grill list. And I like the F sport models. I think they did a good job uh, blacking out the bezel on the outside. And then they didn't overly plastic got plasticize. They didn't overly clad the outside of the bumper with this mesh pattern. So very well done with the spindle grill design, especially the ES F sport here. Here it is in red. This is at the dealership. I used to work at take pictures at. Man, it's a good looking vehicle, especially with those trippies, man. Those trippies on the, the ES redesign are excellent. Here it is without the trippies. Just the basic, this is a hybrid, mind you, just the basic grill here. Not bad. All right, then we're going to the GS where the, the spindle grill started off. Now, this is uh, actually the GS refresh. So this, I think this uh, style and look came out in 2016. Um, not bad. What do you guys think? I think it's one of the better looking spindle grills out there, but it gets a little bit better with the S port. Unfortunately, this isn't blacked out on the outside, so it does look kind of silly, but I like the depth. I like the depth that this, the GS spindle grill gives you. It's not just kind of one flat piece. It looks a lot better on white than it does on the super uh, ultrasonic blue Mica 2.0. The, the bezel kind of just fades into the white paint color here. Uh, so man, not a bad looking spindle grill. And then we get into the the King GS, rest in peace GS, especially the GSF. Look at this bad boy. Now this is an aftermarket lip down here and they put, you know, carbon fiber at the bottom of the spindle group. But man, that is, a, that is a good looking face right there on that GS. And this is a picture I took at the dealership on this uh, Atomic Silver GS. And just look at the depth here uh, of these inlets on the side. This is one of my favorite spindle grills of all time on the GSF. What do you guys think? There it is on that nebula gray matte color for that 20, I think it's the 20th anniversary of F. Moving on to the IS. The IS has always been a really good looking vehicle from the first gen all the way to, to current with the 2021 redesign. And here we're looking at like a 2015 F Sport. It's not bad. It's definitely pretty aggressive. And then we got the, 20, I think it was 2017, 2018, we got a redesign or should I say a refresh a refresh on the front end, and it's a decent looking front end, very GSF looking on the IS. Um, and then we got to 2021, and this is where Lexus blew us away with the, the looks of the IS, at least on the outside. The inside is the carryover from the previous gen, but the outside, the new lights look so good. The spindle grill is dialed in. Plastic cladding on the outside isn't overdone like it was on the NX that we talked about earlier. A very, very good spindle grill design overall. And even on the non F sports, you can argue that this might even look a little bit better than the F sports because the, the, uh, plastic on the siding, the inlet on the side, isn't overly aggressive. And you have that nice depth that we saw on the GSF. Very excellent looking spindle grill here. Here it is in red. Oh, looking great with those BBS wheels. Just love the, the design of the IS. And then we have the IS 500 and man, yeah, this is the ultimate IS, right? Well, in theory, you know, it's, it is mo the most expensive. It has the V8, the V8 in itself is probably worth the price of admission, but the IS 350 
is, is very well balanced. The best spindle grill design arguably is the LC500, and it's arguably the best Lexus design ever outside of the LFA. But the LC500, my God, look at this thing, guys. Every time I see an L5, LC500 on the streets, it never gets old. I, it, it's just such a beautiful design. They, made, they took it from concept to production with very little changes. And the spindle grill is great. And guess what? Like, it's, it's not a complete spindle grill. It, it doesn't have a ridiculous bezel on the top. And the bezel around is so minimal. And the design on the inside is very elegant how it changes from a tight knit pattern up top to a looser pattern at the bottom. Man, the LC 500 made that spindle grill. It took it to another dimension in terms of looks when this vehicle came out in 2018. Ooh, look at that. The cadmium orange here, that drop top. I would take that and put it in my garage any day of the week. Here we have a structural blue uh, with this drop top. This was the limited edition. Uh, launch edition essentially. I think they only made a hundred of these things, but that spindle grill looking great it just flows so well on that LC 500. And I could just, yeah, man, that would be fun drifting this thing on an ice lake. And here we are. This is like the ultimate version of it. If you wanted to modify it, look at this thing. It's blacked out. They have additional lip at the bottom. This is a beautiful looking LC. Uh, maybe not the most practical. I can't see it going over that many speed bumps. And here it is in cadmium orange again. The new NX's front grill is one of the better uh, grill designs for the spindle grill ever, in my opinion. Is it is it like top five? Maybe you could argue it. It, it makes the old NX look stupid uh, with how good it looks. Another uh, honorable mention here, like it was rough sledding when the RC came out and you didn't get an NF Sport. Look at this terrible grill uh, with the fog lights built into the side. Terrible, terrible design. The rest of the car is sexy, right? The RC is a very good looking coupe. Um, but when you went to the F Sport, it made it look a lot better. Still, you had the chrome on the outside, which is unfortunate, but they got rid of those funny looking fog light things in the in the spindle grill. And then we uh, got the 2019 refresh. Really cool stacked triple beam LED headlights. And then they blacked out the bezel on the front of that spindle grill, made it look so much better. Uh, and then even on the non-F sports, look how good this non-F sport, this is very much like the LC's pattern, right? The tight knit at the top and it loosens at the bottom. Uh, and even the non-triple headlights, they did a great job with that RC. And then we have the RCF. This is uh, a, a, maybe the Fuji Speedway edition with the carbon fiber uh, on the back and the carbon fiber on the hood. This thing is a beautiful car. Spindle grill, no one's going to complain about that, in my opinion, on this vehicle. And then we had the, the matte Nebula Gray. Might also be a, some sort of track edition. I don't remember all my special editions with RC. There's a new one every year, it seems like. Uh, carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber wing. I think you have the carbon ceramic brakes. If it is uh, one of those track editions, I don't remember exactly. Uh, just an excellent looking vehicle on the outside. Here's a basic RCF in the flare yellow here. And then an honorable, another honorable mention here. I think the UX, the UX, you know, it does have some bulldog teeth coming out here at the bottom. I wish it didn't have this bezel, but it's, it's up there. It's a decent looking spindle grill overall. Now we're heading into present day slash the future of the spindle grill. It is now molding into the spindle body and the new RX it looks okay. It, you know, it is controversial a little bit. A lot of, a lot of people call this the beluga whale. It's got a big forehead. They say it looks like the civic front end. You know, I don't think it looks bad. It doesn't bother me. Like the 2016 RX it doesn't trigger me like that really triggered this vehicle. It looks okay. And I think that's fine because it's an RX. It doesn't need to be, you know, the most aggressive or most badass looking vehicle. I think it's serviceable. And I'm going to argue that in non-F-Sport guys, it might actually look better than the F-Sports because what they do with the F-Sport design is uh, it's a lot. Man, I, what do you, I, I think it looks good with this red. Holy cow. That's a look, good looking RX there in my opinion. I love the copper crest color. Looks great. And then the F-Sport is just a little, little too aggressive because there's nothing really to break up the mesh pattern grill here. It's just all black. We're on, remember... Going back here, we have like these little diamonds in here that look pretty, looks good. It kind of breaks it up a bit. And then you have additional black plastic here. And then you have these boomerangs at the bottom. The F Sport, in my opinion, does not look as good 
as the non F sport. And it's not the first time that has happened, right? But it, it is what it is. Here it is with the Copper Crest looking pretty sick. And, you know, this would probably look better. The F Sport would look a little bit better if you had a fully black model. This is not the F Sport 500. This is the 350 because it has like a silver at the bottom instead of black. The black designates the 500 F Sport performance. This is the 350 F Sport. And then we're getting more into the future here. The RZ hasn't come out yet. Production is kind of put to the wayside right now because they can't produce vehicles coming out of that Motomachi plant. So, and the wheels are falling off on the BZ4X, it's a nightmare. But this is where the design's going. And I don't like it in the two-tone. The two-tone is terrible. I've, where's that one picture? This, look how bad that is. Awful, awful design. God, I can't even, I can't even look at it. If you get it without the two-tone paint, it looks good. It looks serviceable, decent, and you still, that unique Lexus look, but Man, the bow tie two-tone paint, absolutely horrid, horrid. Also, here's another look at the RZ without the two-tone. Looks pretty decent. But let's get into what Akio Toyota showed us this past December. I lightened up the image so we could see, you know, the models in the back. Here's the upcoming redesign ES. We have the TX. And we had our first look at the RX as well before it, it was even announced. And we also have this little hatchback back here. Uh, that hasn't been announced either. But this is where Lexus is going with the spindle grill, morphing it into the spindle body. Unfortunately, we won't see this new sexy design until solid state batteries are out. Probably, maybe. It all depends if the next generation IS comes out with this design um, or if it's just a rear wheel drive front engine, internal combustion engine, or if it's fully battery electric. I'm hearing both at this point in time. Maybe they launch both. That would be pretty cool to have a fully battery electric IS with um, an internal combustion variant of it as well. Here's the Sport EV for Lexus. This thing will do zero to 60 in two seconds, 800 horsepower, yada, yada. Um, the new IS looks amazing. Hopefully uh, it comes out sooner rather than later as a battery electric vehicle option. And then here's the three row crossover. Uh, Going to be somewhat the TX. Maybe the TX looks a lot like this. Uh, but you know, the TX has a fully electric variant, which might be this vehicle right here. A better look at the spindle body here doesn't really resemble the outgoing spindle grill at all, which I'm totally okay with. I'm happy to move past it. And then we have the TX again, uh, which will be, uh, revealed probably next mid next year and available by the end of 2023. I'm happy that the spindle grill is finally moving away from the Man, the rough time that we had probably from about 2015 to 2019 was the worst spindle grill designs. Just polarizing, makes you feel sick to your stomach, and you're spending a lot of money on a vehicle that its first impression is you're ugly. And man, I'm so glad we're past those rough times. The design for Lexus is only going to get better. And man, once they get fully battery electric, they might have some of the best designs out there on the market, which is crazy because they had some of the worst designs in the 2010s with the spindle grill. And man, I'm ready to break free of that. I'll see what you guys have to say about the spindle grill. There's no shortage of opinions about this thing. It definitely is a talking point about Lexus, but it's mostly for bad reasons, unfortunately. But what they say, right? Any public, even bad publicity is good publicity, right? Isn't that, I don't know what they say. Anyways, guys, Thank you so much for watching the history of the spindle grill. Thank you for the ride along with my opinions from the best to the worst. And as we go into the future with the spindle body, have a great day. Take care of yourselves and peace out.